So I'll just preface this video with a um, point I just forgot to make when I was actually making the uh, full video, and that is um, if you encounter somebody on YouTube, one of the Flat Earth channels, that states the horizon always rises to eye level, just ask them to answer honestly if they have actually measured it themselves and what sort of accurate reference they use to measure it. Now, I ask this question every time. Every time I see somebody that states the horizon rises to eye level, I ask them, when did you measure it? How high did you go? And what accurate reference did you use? Now, that usually results in me getting blocked or they just ignore the question altogether. I've not had one single person answer that question honestly. So I suggest if you're doing your research and you're doing it honestly, if anyone tells you that the horizon always rises to eye level, ask them to show you a video they made themselves, ask them how they tested it, how high they went, and what accurate reference they used for measuring the horizon drop. So just talking a little bit more about this horizon drop when you go to high altitude, uh, there seems to be a bit of discussion on it at the moment, and there were certainly a lot of comments on my video when I measured this on the uh, Qantas flight recently. This is just a uh, screenshot from uh, my video when I was at 33,000 feet, and you'll notice that the horizon appears to be down here. Now, when we were at 6,000 feet, the horizon was just at the uh, lower part of the winglet there, so you can see there appears to be a significant drop. Now, what some people have claimed is that the wing is flexing more. Well, no, that's not true, because what causes the flex on the wing is actually the weight of the aircraft, and the weight of the aircraft at 6,000 feet and at 33,000 feet is very similar. If anything, it's lighter at the high altitude, so the wing flex would be less. So, certainly not wing flex. The other claim was that the aircraft was turning. Well, I'll draw your attention to the ailerons here. There are three control surfaces on the A380 on each wing that are ailerons, and they can move in unison and sometimes uh, independently. But uh, what they do is they will actually cause the aircraft to turn or roll, roll left or roll right, and whenever the aircraft's turning, you'll see those moving quite significantly. Now, what I'll do is link to a video in the comments of this same flight just after takeoff, and you'll see those ailerons are moving quite significantly, but they're not moving um, in the actual clip where I'm showing the horizon drop, and that's verifying that the aircraft is actually staying level. The other thing people have said is that looking at this horizon, we're not looking at the true horizon because it's so far away and that uh, there's a lot of haze and poor visibility, so it's being obscured. So that's fine, you know, I, I actually don't disagree with that because there are some days when the haze is so poor, we just can't discern uh, a clear horizon at all, and that, that's absolutely true. But uh, by making that claim, they're actually contradicting a very common flat earth claim that the horizon always rises to eye level. So it's not always rising to eye level, they're now saying that it's due to the uh, lack of visibility, due to um, reduced visibility in the atmosphere. So, uh, so obviously the horizon, one way or another, is not always rising to uh, eye level. Now let's just address some of that a little bit further. The, uh, the other thing that has been addressed is uh, there's no way of determining where true eye level is here. That's okay too. Um, what I'm going to do is just draw your attention to something in a, an aircraft, and this is uh, fairly common in most airliners and most corporate aircraft. They are three little alignment balls and when you uh, jump in the seat then you do yourself butt up and adjust the seat position you align your eyes so that two of these balls are completely lined up with each other and what that does is it ensures that your seat is in the same position every time you fly and that gives you the optimum view of the instrument panel and in our aircraft with a head-up display it gives the best view straight through the head-up display because the field of view is quite narrow and if you you move your head left or right just a few inches, you'll lose completely the head-up display picture. So let me just show you in our aircraft the seat alignment balls. Now you'll see that this ball here is actually aligned with the one behind it. And in my video I actually do pan around so you can see the two balls. Notice when they're aligned, that's actually the position of our eye level. Now look where the horizon is it's again significantly below that. So absolute proof that the horizon does not always rise to eye level. Now whether it's due to curvature of the earth or whether it's just due to reduced visibility, it really doesn't matter. The point is, it has not risen to eye level. So that refutes the flat earth claim that the horizon always rises to eye level. It absolutely does not. And uh, what we'll look at now is just this um, reduced visibility. Okay, now, 
in the aircraft that I fly, we have something called an enhanced vision system that actually enables us to look through most of the haze and poor visibility. And you'll see that when I turn on the enhanced vision system, the horizon that it is showing is basically closely matched to the visible horizon. It's a little bit higher on that side, so that's showing there's probably a little bit of extra haze there, so that's fine. But in every case, you'll see that that horizon is below the true level. Okay, so we definitely have a situation where the horizon has dropped not only below eye level, but below true level, because the aircraft has electronic instruments which measure true level. And when we're flying in level flight, this uh, velocity vector is in line with the true level. I also found uh, another good video, and I'll link to this one as well, which shows the same thing in a similar type of aircraft at ground level, you'll see that that line is in line with the um, horizon, but again, when they fly, if I can get that forward, okay, it shows basically the flight as it's climbing, you'll see the horizon level is rising above the, the uh, actual Earth's horizon, and you'll see up there at 25,000 feet, it's also showing the horizon is below the true level. So again, I'll link to that video, it's well worth watching because it shows the um, basically the whole flight. So there are plenty of good videos on YouTube that uh, explain the EVS and just give you an example of how much better you can see uh, in the head-up display using the EVS than you can with the naked eye. You see the EVS uh, shows you detail that you just cannot see.